Hey, welcome to Random American, and today we're talking about what is arguably the most important part of an LS swap, and that's the financial side. So we're going to go ahead and break everything down into a few different categories and see how it turns out. Okay, so whenever it comes to a swap, Every one of them is going to be different. It doesn't matter if you have a photocopy of my truck and my setup. It's going to be a little bit different on each one. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going into what it cost me, what you absolutely have to have for my specific swap, which is a K10 with a LQ4 and a 4L80E transmission. Then we're going to go into some things that are a nice upgrade, even if yours are in decent shape or just a little extra, a couple, a couple extra things. And then lastly, I'm just going to go over uh, basically my expenses that I had to shell out because my donor truck and my square body both were, you know, not great. So we're going to go ahead and jump into the first part, which is what you absolutely have to have. So starting out with things that you absolutely have to have, there's going to be a theme to how all of these are set up. So I'm going to have what the part is, how much it costs, and this includes shipping and tax if I had to ship it in, which I'm pretty sure I shipped in everything other than my tune maybe. But it's going to be what it is, cost with shipping and tax, where it came from, and a part number. So you have to keep in mind with some of these numbers, they're going to change because everything goes up all the time. This is just what it cost at the time of doing the swap and as I bought it. So this might not come down to this exact dollar and cents amount for you, but it could be close. Starting off, fuel pump, fuel tank sending unit. You don't absolutely have to have a tank per se, but it's a good idea because you need, really need a baffled tank to keep the fuel from sloshing around, so tank is on the need list. All of that together cost me $279.36. I got that from Rock Auto. I will have all these part numbers down in the description. I'll try and have them listed with what they are and the part number and where I got it from. Next, I have 6AN, 6AN, 3 8 and 5 16 compression fittings. Those go on your fuel tank itself, at least they did for me. $33.90. Each of those are in a pack of two, so you'll get four fittings. I got those off of Amazon. They're Evil Energy. Next, I have LS to 8th inch NPT oil pressure adapter. That was 9 bucks roughly, because that was in a bunch of other stuff that was in a different part of the list, so I just rounded that as close as I could. That was off Amazon. That was Joy Trace. I don't know. You don't have to be super specific with that one. Some of these, you can just look up whatever it is, and it's not a big deal, but I still have part numbers for them. I have a radiator hose adapter, and that's because I was using a 90s model radiator. I can't remember if the square body radiators have the same size hose is the 90s model Chevys. I don't think they did, but I put it in here just in case. Next, I have a quarter inch barb to eighth inch NPT along with a radiator hose adapter, which I think went from one and a quarter to one and a half or one and a half to one three quarters, something like that, because I'm using the 90s model radiator. I can't remember if a square body radiator hose is the same size. I think it, it might be the correct size, but don't hold me to that. So I just put it in here just in case. Both of those cost me $23.45 off Amazon. One is a... I can't even pronounce that one. It's probably a China company, so is the other one. It's JoyTube. Got part numbers for both of those. Stuff like that, along with the oil pressure sensor adapter, you can just... Google it or put it into Amazon, they'll bring you a hundred different options. The next thing is off Amazon also, that is your tor torque converter brake switch. That I also got off Amazon, but that is an AC Delco part. It cost me 20 bucks-ish. 
the thing after that. So there's a little bit of back and forth on this one. My fuel regulator, $43.35. Got that off Amazon. The one I currently have, like I showed before, is still the Evil Energy one. I don't know what happened with it. It was giving me 74 to 78 PSI, and then it was all over the place. And then all of a sudden, it just started working. I don't understand. It's still on there. I'm probably going to put the diaphragm one on as soon as I, as soon as I put my tank straps on. Anyway, the next things that I ordered in, not really bulk, but all together, was relays. I got, so I got uh, these last couple of things from Amazon too. I got relays. Uh, 6 a.m. fuel rail adapter, which is where I hook my fuel pressure sensor into, and a 6 a.m. fuel line kit. All three of those cost me $88.81. From Amazon, I, I Rhapsody was the relays, and then Evil Energy was my 6 a.m. stuff. Everything 6 a.m. on that truck is Evil Energy. Everything. The next thing is my engine mounts, $25.04 from Amazon, from Moker, sure, got part numbers for that. The Tune is from a local guy around here. I will talk to him about maybe shouting him out on here if he wants to do Tune work. I think he's getting out of it, so maybe not. Anyways, that was $100 to me. I don't know what it would be to anybody else. Getting into the heavier stuff, your transmission crossmember. Keep in mind, this is for my specific swap. So I got a uh, four-wheel drive high crossmember from Tejas. I had to have that because the one for my SM465 was too low. The cross member you have may work, it might not. I don't know, that's something you're gonna have to figure out for yourself once you get the engine and transmission and transfer set in there. So that was $210 even. I like how they do that with their pricing and their shipping and all that. The next thing is my engine oil. So I got AMS oil break-in oil. I didn't have to get AMS oil break-in oil. But I did anyways. I got AMS oil break-in oil because I put new rings in it and because that engine needed every chance it could get. So I went ahead and got that. Uh, that was a steep one. That was $75.13. I got trans fluid from them and that was enough to do the transmission and the transfer case with a transmission filter. That was $217.11. My muffler is a 14 inch MagnaFlow. I have the part numbers for that too. I got that from Amazon and it was $134.62 and I'm actually very, 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 very happy with it. I got a coolant temp adapter. So the, uh, the adapter for my temp probe itself was $20.13. Last for the things you absolutely have to have is your vehicle speed sensor for an NP208, which is the transfer case that I have. Walters Engineering, hell of a good kit, really like it. $146.90. That brings the grand total of all of this that you have to have for the swap. So that is assuming that everything on your engine from your donor truck and your truck itself is good to go. It is how it should be. Everything works the way it should. Assuming that the MP208 had the correct input shaft and assuming that your drive shaft was the correct length right off the bat, which mine was mostly because it was too short in the SM465, the more I look back on it, but it's good now. Everything's great. Assuming all of that, it was $1,937.44. That is all the more it costs, not including the donor truck, to do a LS swap. Now there's probably some things that I didn't absolutely have to have, or maybe some things that you have laying around that you could scrounge up to make that uh, 
work for you without having to get it. So, let's say your cross member will work just fine, or you have a way to shim it a little bit to make it work fine. There's $210 off that you don't have to have. If you want to just use regular old oil because you didn't have to dig into the engine, then that's going to be quite a bit off. You could probably get that down to like 40 bucks for your oil change. If your transmission, if you're able to save your transmission fluid, I probably wouldn't do that, but you also don't have to go with hands oil. You can save money there. So there's things that you can do to bring this down some. This is just what it cost me. And these are the things that I absolutely had to have to make the swap happen. There's the first thing done. Next. Next is a list of things that I think are just a good idea. Things that I would definitely do again because they either made my life easier or they put my mind at ease that just make sense to me. So starting out are motor mount bushings. Mine were completely shot, so I had to do them. But if your motor mount bushings are in good shape, you don't have to do it. But those cost me $73.74 from Rock Auto. Those are the energy suspension ones. Next, I got spark plugs, trans cooler lines, and fuel tank straps. You don't have to do tank straps, but it might be a good idea. Trans cooler, you know, all this. It might, just might be a good idea. All those three things were $80.09 from Rock Auto. That was AC Delco for the spark plugs. Sun Song for the trans lines and the fuel tank straps are Spectra. Okay. Next is the fuel pressure gauge. I upgraded to a glow shift. So the $40 or $50 one that I had that was a no name, they took it clean off Amazon. It's not there anymore. You're not going to find it because it's a piece of crap. Uh, it just stopped working altogether on me. So the, the glow shift one was $98.57 from Amazon. Doesn't matter, they're a registered dealer uh, through glow shift. So it's a glow shift genuine, but it was still $98.57. Next, <laughs> I have my pod mount, my bus bars, and my 6 a.m. fuel pressure adapter, and that is the piece that my fuel line, or my pressure gauge actually screws into up at my rail. That stuff just cost me 40 bucks. I got header studs for my headers. They were $22. They were off Amazon. They were from 269 Motorsports. The next thing was plug wires. They were also from Amazon, $44.51. They are from JDM Speed. They have the most reviews of any angled plug wire on Amazon. And they, it, them, other than them being JDM, they were pretty good. Because, you know, JDM's a, a foreign thing. The next thing is air filter. I got a Banks air filter for mine. Now you can technically use the factory air box if you want to move your battery to the other side, which I'm probably going to do anyways and build a box for this. But I went with the Banks because they make really good stuff. For the most part, anything Gail Banks tells me, I just accept it as good. He's done more science and research into it than I am willing to. Got that off Amazon for $59.36. I have part numbers for all this stuff. Knock sensors are a good idea. I absolutely had to have them because mine came apart. But doing knock sensors while you're already there, get the genuine ones. These are forty. These ones were forty dollars and twenty seven cents. But they've given me a little bit of trouble. You'll probably need to get better ones. Always go with AC Delco if you can. Delphi might be okay or Delphi might be all right. But. AC Delco, GM Genuine, the ones you should get. These ones are AC Delco, allegedly, from eBay. Then I put on here power steering lines because I did the hydro boost off of the donor truck onto this. So I had, had to have brand new power steering lines. That was $31.22, wasn't too bad. Or these are power steering uh, adapters, sorry. So if you're lines on your donor truck are good. 
Then these adapters are off eBay. They are from CPP. I have the eBay number for those. Then the headers were $95.17 off eBay. They don't have a brand name because there's a hundred different options. They're all the exact same one. I would recommend getting the ones with the collectors because it makes your life a little bit easier, but yeah, you do you. The total for all of this was $584.87. So if you do all of this plus the stuff that you absolutely have to have, you come to $2,522.31 for a swap with a few things to give you peace of mind that I just think is a really good idea. So lastly, we're going to move on to, this is just the curiosity page of things that I had to do and then you might have to do if your setup's a total piece of shit like mine was. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, before we get into this too far, I have 387 subscribers as of right now, and I want to say thank you guys. That is absolutely awesome. I'd like to get to 1,000 before the end of the year, but that being said, all of you guys that are here right now, you guys are fucking awesome. Because I know guys have 10, 20 million subscribers, but I just want to put it in perspective. So you have 387 people, say, sitting right in front of you, and you're sitting here talking to them, and some of them actually want to hear what you have to say. And that's pretty cool. So thank you guys, and if you're a new viewer, I recommend, well, not really recommend, but I ask you to subscribe because it means a lot to me. And you can be another one of those people in those seats. So, appreciate it, guys. Now the sappy stuff is over. Get another drink. And we can move into stuff that I had to buy. Because I'm dumb. First, ga a full gasket and ring kit. With, uh, with all my bearings. That was uh, engine tech. The parts are all right, but I did have a problem with my thrust bearing. They couldn't, they wouldn't help me, and Rock Auto is about useless. So take that as you will. The parts themselves are all right, but customer service. Anyway, that was four hundred and eighteen dollars and thirty-four cents. Power steering lines because mine were rusted in half, twenty-five bucks, and that was for both of them. Up next are my trans cooler fittings. They were pretty screwed up, and these are the fittings that actually go into the transmission themselves. They were $45.02. My oil sensor line, because the three gauges that I had, the sensor line was plastic, and I think I broke it. I don't know. But that was $14.79. The crank sensor pigtail that fell apart on me was 12 bucks. I got wire loom and wire loom tape. I got the uh, longer things of wire loom. I think they were 50 foot, 25 foot. I can't remember. That was half inch, three quarter, and one inch. The next thing is my wire loom and wire loom tape. The wire loom is half inch, three quarter, and one inch. So that was three separate rolls of that and wire loom tape, which came in five little rolls. That was $103.07, but I kind of had to have that to make everything, you know, not terrible. Then comes my trans cooler adapters for my radiator itself. Those are 13 bucks. I had to get front accessory bolts because I lost mine. <clears throat> that was great. $39.20. I got a two inch roll of rubber and that was for my tank strap gaskets, my anti-squeak stuff, that was $24.38. My knock sensor harness, because that was very much junk, was 13 bucks. The fuel rail that I get had to get off of eBay was $58.86. I had to get a transmission dipstick, which was $23.63 from Speedway, and I thought that was really nice. Then I had to get a speedometer. That was off eBay for $30.73. Update, I really like that speedometer. I might leave the part number for that down below too. 
there will be a few things in here that I really like that I'll leave down in the description also. Had to get injectors off of eBay. One of those was clogged. Imagine that. That was $89.18. I had to get an oil dipstick cable because I ordered the wrong oil dipstick tube. And it was too short. It was for a shallow pan. So that was wonderful. That was $24.44. The oil dipstick tube itself was $39.03. So I could have just got a factory one for the same price. But because I'm an idiot, I didn't. I got the pedal mount from Tejas. That was 50 bucks. Then the truck wiring harness. So all of the wiring for my lights and all of that was 91 bucks. And that came with a fuse box and all. You saw me wire that all in. The total for things because my stuff is crappy is $1,114.67. Bringing my total of things without the donor truck to $3,636.98. If you add in the $500 for my donor truck, I am in this entire swap a total of $4,136.98. So, I know, I know LS swap isn't for everybody. I know not everybody can afford it. But hopefully this sheds some light on how much it costs real world, realistically, to get you running and driving down the road with better power, better fuel economy, and just an overall better truck. You don't have to fight with the carburetor. You just go out and you start the thing and you're gone. I didn't add anything fancy to it like air conditioning or I didn't add a cam. I didn't do none of that. I just wanted the truck to be exactly as it was, but better. And that's what we did for $4,100. And the truck, I drive it every day. So... That's going to do it for this here video. I want to thank you guys very, 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 very much because this has been awesome. Next week, I should be getting the rear end put in that truck. Hopefully, if this holiday doesn't get in the way too much. So, I will see you guys doing that and throwing the rear end underneath that truck so I don't have to worry about it exploding going down the road. And I hope you guys have a great Memorial Day weekend. Stay safe and have a good one.